Hey there, Will Marshall here, back with another video. Been a little while again since I've been in contact, but um, I recently got hold of a device that I've been really keen to get my hands on for quite some time. Finally, it came out in the UK last month, but I couldn't get my hands on one. They sort of sold out very quickly, you know, and it's signed things to come. But I finally managed to get my hands on one, so here it is, it's the Lenovo IdeaPad Duet Chromebook. So back here I am after two weeks of using the Lenovo IdeaPad Duet. I've got some thoughts on the device, its software, and just where it sits as a general ultra portable in 2020. Let's just get down to it. So I'm going to split it into four sections. I'm going to talk about the hardware first, followed by performance, how that fares, touch on the software um, of the device, and then finally look at the price, because uh, that's quite a key area of the um, Duet, quite a key selling point for the Duet. No pun intended. So let's start with the hardware. So when I unboxed this a few weeks ago, I sort of said that the, the hardware itself really kind of st stood out to me and I thought it was a great looking device. That still stands true two weeks later. It is a really well built device, you know, in this price point, having a device that's kind of got this nice metal body with this quite unique kind of two-toned finish is a really nice touch. It sort of differentiates it from, you know, the iPads of this world where you've just got a big solid slab of aluminium on the back. A lot of other devices, Samsung's tabs do the same. So it just gives you that quite unique view to it. So the display is also pretty good. I found, to be honest, it's a 1080p, 10.1 inch display. Um, it's not gonna win any massive awards in terms of how bright or how sharp it is. It's um, you know, it's it's for its price point. It's not, it doesn't have a high refresh, re refresh rate display. It's not an OLED panel. It's a standard IPS, but it works really well. And I think for, for this price of the Duet, you're not gonna have any problems with the display. Um, it does get fairly bright, up to 400 nits. I didn't find any problems using it out and about. Um, or in, in a coffee shop or at my desk, you know, with the sun glaring on it. So that, so that's good to know. So another area of the hardware to talk about is the speakers on this device. Now these are, um, they're quite good in the sense they're a place at the top. Two stereo speakers firing from the top, left and right. Um, they are really quite quiet. So I'm just going to play a bit of music here on YouTube. So this is what you get. I'm not sure how well this comes up on the audio recording, but really they are. You have to push them quite hard, all the way to the max, for it to really be usable. And if it's perhaps something, if you're someone who wants to use the speakers on this um, more than just, you know, for, for the odd occasion to listen to audio, then I would, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that, could be a, that could be a problem for you. Port-wise on this device, you've got fairly minimal connectivity, to be honest with you. You've got a single USB-C port, and that's it. No headphone jack. It would have been nice to see a headphone jack in a device of this price point. Let's be honest, but I think you know, with the with the single USB C port, that's kind of the deal you get in 2020. So let's add on the two additional peripherals that you get in the box. So you get with the Duet a a cover, so a magnetically attachable cover with this nice fabric backing, and also a keyboard case. You know, here it is. You can see here as it's connected. This is great. It's one of the very few devices I think that bundles this in the box for this price point. So that's a real bonus. I've got some thoughts on both of these peripherals. It's hard to kind of be too critical of them because you know they come in with the box, but you know we are here to review this, so let's be a bit critical. Um, the back cover, I can't really be too critical about, to be honest. I quite like it. It's um, I love this fabric feel to it, to be honest. I think it's much nicer than the kind of the faux rubbery feel that you get on the iPads, um, folio keyboards. Um, it's actually nicer than the rubbery sort of base that the keyboard base for this device has. Um, it's got a, tra tra a kickstand built in. You know, and that can go to a whole range of wide range of angles. Maybe not quite as wide as the surface goes, but you know, it's still pretty good. I found it to be fairly dur durable and um, and definitely usable, and it's a really nice addition to have on the back of this case. 
So one of the criticisms I have of this is that when you come to kind of flip open the back, you tend to kind of just grip the back of the, the cover itself and not not hit the hit the kickstand, you know, as um as easily as you might do on you know the Surface Go, which has you know obviously it's all built in, it's very rigid. So that, that's a, a slight niggle, but I mean it's really marginal. It's one thing that you get used to, and once you kind of get used to where that kind of little little you know indent is on the edge there, it's not going to be a huge deal for you, I don't think. Okay, so the keyboard cover. Now here I've got a few more points and um, and criticisms. There's criticisms to level at this, really. So the positives of this are that you know the keyboard actually is really quite good to type on. You know, Lenovo is pretty much best in class for kind of laptop keyboards. Um, that translates to this little duet keyboard in some ways. You know, it's got a nice typing feel. Um, the travel's good. The keys are a good size. It maybe it's, it's maybe maybe a little bit soft and mushy. It's not quite as satisfying actually as the iPad Pro's Magic Keyboard to type on. But all in all, again for the price point, it's um it's really satisfying to type on. Okay, so some things I don't particularly like about the keyboard. Um, you know, the layout is a little bit strange. I think this is probably more actually to be down to the fact that this is a Chrome OS focused device and I'm not quite used to that, so I'm not only too critical of the, the layout itself, but I found it a bit weird having these, you know, quite large control and alt keys and not having a caps lock, for example. Again, not really a criticism of the duets included keyboard. Um, more of a criticism for me is the trackpad. Now, I didn't find this to be particularly responsive. It's a good size. Um, you can't, you can't, can't argue with that. It's a diving ball trackpad, so you know, you're not going to get kind of one click everywhere, and it'll you know it'll it'll it'll, it'll click and register a click. But I did find that the trackpad itself was a little bit unresponsive. You know, coming from a, say an iPad Pro's Magic Keyboard or my MacBook Air's keyboard, which have really 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 responsive trackpads. Even the Surface Go 2, when I reviewed that, um, that you know using Windows Precision Driver, so that had a really responsive feel to it. I just find this is a little bit lacking in that area. So the trackpad's definitely somewhere where they've potentially um, cut corners to lower the cost of the included keyboard. Um, another thing I found to be a little bit odd when it comes to the keyboard is the this kind of this connector bar itself. At the top. You can see it's quite it's quite rigid, and the and the magnets in here are actually really quite good. They're strong. They hold it in place. However, it's a little bit you know it, you can see it a little bit. It's a little bit blocky. So I found that when I was connecting the keyboard into the device like so, when you lay it down sometimes and try and get it into its sort of productivity mode, the, the connector can kind of click in and out of place slightly, which is a little bit of, a, it's not a huge criticism of it, but I think it's a slight design flaw. It's annoying because what it does is it jumps Chrome OS back between its tablet mode and its um, desktop mode, you know. So that, that that's a little, a little bit strange. Um, a bit of a niggle, but again, it's not a huge deal breaker. It's more of an annoyance. Um, the other thing I found is also the, the ribbon, kind of the ribbon you can see here is quite loose. I think it's a similar criticism that was leveled at the, um, the Google Slates keyboard, but you can see kind of it sort of tends to kind of, you know, flap about a bit when it's on. And that, that was a little bit extreme, but you know, if I if I get this properly closed up there, you can kind of see it's, it's a bit loose at the top there. <laughs> Let's move on to the device performance here. So this is primarily a a budget device. You know, at its price point, it's not going to have top end specs. So I'll do a quick rundown of the actual specs of the Lenovo Duet. So what you're looking at here is a MediaTek Helio P60T octa core processor. It's a mid to low end um, ARM chip. Uh, the display is a 10.1 inch. Full HD display with a brightness up to 400 nits. The GPU is an ARM G72 MP3. Um, battery life is rated up to around 10 hours. RAM here is um, 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM. And then the storage can be either 64 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes, depending on the variation that you pick. Um, cameras wise, you've got an 8 megapixel shooter on the back and a 2 megapixel shooter on the front. So in day-to-day -day use, I found it pretty nice to use. To be honest, it wasn't. I wasn't finding it lagging. It was handling things like browsing, answering email, taking notes, um, watching Netflix, streaming YouTube, all that sort of stuff on the device. It was handling that no problems um, with with very minimal performance issues that were obvious at all. Um, things that do push it a little bit harder are. You know, if you start playing around with the Linux apps in Chrome OS, then you know doing that because actually that runs inside like a 
an MLA container and you know emulation tends to be very CPU heavy some of those Linux apps can be a little bit um, sluggish to load and but but you know the ones I used weren't particularly um, power intensive so they, they they tended to run pretty well I would also essentially expect similar kind of performance with the Android app side of things because they run inside them you know um, an emulator container as well so that's something to look out for if, you, if you're buying this primarily to make use of the Android tab the Android app Functionality on the tablet, and you know, and to, and to dig into the into the, the Linux apps in Chrome OS, then maybe I'd read into something a little bit more powerful. I think it it might end up infuriating you a bit, but for those they use, I think it's perfectly good. Um, battery life wise, um, I got between sort of eight and nine hours out of it, sort of regular day to day use again. So I tend to have the brightness quite high. I had it between about seventy and eighty percent all the time when I was using it. But, you know, just logging on, logging off, taking some notes during my working week, um, browsing the net, watching a bit of Netflix, you know, that sort of thing. That was um, perfectly ample. In terms of the continuous kind of video test I did, I tend to run a standard um, streaming test where I stream 1080p video from YouTube continuously. I hit five hours and 40 minutes for that test. It wasn't um, brilliant, actually it, was, it wasn't It was actually as good as the Surface Go 2 when I reviewed that a few months ago. That hit about six hours. But, you know, so in terms of like if you're going to take this on a long haul flight, it may not be the best um, performer for you. But I think sort of regular dip in, dip out usage of the device to get things done. I don't think the battery life is going to be much of a problem for you there. OK, so point three, let's talk a little about the software. So this is a unique device in that it runs, it's a two-in-one, ultra portable, and it runs Chrome OS. And I think, personally, having used it in this two-in-one device, I think Chrome OS is a real winner. It does a really good job at kind of switching between a tablet focus mode when the keyboard is attached, and then a productivity focus desktop mode when it is attached. Um, I don't want to make this kind of a, a review of Chrome OS, I'm reviewing the Chromebook Duet here. To kind of sum up my experience with the software, as I say, I think it's a really neat, I think it's a really great combination, Chrome OS and a two-in-one device. That's kind of my, my big takeaway here. I think it works really well if you want to get things done. The productivity focused nature of Chrome OS is, you know, second to none. Um, it's you know, getting really close to Windows. It's far better than iPad OS in that regard, to be honest. But then if you want something that's more tablet focused, then the tablet mode is not going to be I, don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend the tablet mode for someone who wants primarily a tablet here. If you want to just use tablet mode as kind of a second, a ta use it as a tablet as kind of a peripheral, a secondary thing, then yeah, sure, you can get away with it, I think. You'll be perfectly fine, especially using Chrome in tablet mode, having everything tabbed and everything, it works really well. But yeah, if you really want like a, a core tablet experience, you're really going to want an iPad for that. <laughs> So fine, let's talk about the price. This is the final section really. And this is kind of where this guy comes good. Really, I'm thinking about price. So I've mentioned a couple of other devices in this kind of in this review. I've um, I've touched a lot on the iPad. When I, when I say the iPad, I mean kind of the base level iPad, which you can buy. £329 it costs. Um I've just updated it in the in the in the past week. Um, the base model comes with 32 gigabytes of storage, so it's a bit, that's quite limiting, but then, and then to go up to 128 gigabytes, you're adding another 100 pounds, 429 pounds. If you want to add a case, uh, like a folio keyboard case sort of thing, Apple offer their first party one for 159 pounds. That's not really very good. The, um, what's a better option is the sup more superior Logitech folio case, the folio touch case, which has a trackpad, and that's 119 pounds. So kind of, if you, if, you, if you go with the 32 gigabyte base storage, altogether that comes in at around £450 for the package. Okay, that's how much the iPad will cost. A Surface Go 2 is another option. I reviewed that back earlier in the year. A great little device. If you take the base model there with the Intel Pentium Gold processor, that's £399. Add on top of that a, a Surface Type cover from, from, for 100 £124, depending on whether you want the Alcantara variant. That then brings it up to about £500, £520. So that's kind of the most expensive of this trio. The Lenovo Duet, all in with, you know, tablet, keyboard case, and back cover is £299. So for value, this really is the clear winner. There isn't much else we can say about that. And it really is good value, I have to say. If all the other things I've kind of discussed with the niggles I've had here, if they, if they are anything really significant, you just have to kind of keep coming back and thinking about 
what you're getting for the money here. You're getting a getting a really great device, and you're getting um, essentially all the kind of peripherals, the um, the bits and pieces you need to use this for a bit of productivity focus in the box. And have you have not go out and shell out loads of money on a, a, a keyboard case or a cover that's, that doubles as a kickstand. It's all in the box. It all comes together. And I think that's really great. And that's probably the key thing with this device here. And I should also mention you can get a pen. USI pen support is enabled in Chrome OS. And Lenovo have actually recently announced a USI pen to go with the Duet. Um, it doesn't come with it. It's the one thing you have got to buy. But I think it's really reasonable. I think it's about £40. Um, which is which is I think which is a big bonus if you think about things like I mean, the Surface Pen is £100 and the iPad Apple Pencil for the base iPad is £89. So, you know, again, you're kind of saving there. All in all, it's a good value. Okay, so let's wrap this up. Final thoughts and verdict on the Chromebook Duet. So, yeah, I think it's, it is a, I think it's a great device. I think the, if I had to use one word to describe it, I would say value, really. This is a really good value for money product. You get a lot of things for the for the for the buck here you get obviously as i keep saying you get the the peripherals you get a really well made well built tablet which will do you absolutely fine every day everyday use i think i think there's a lot to be said actually about um about using mid mid-range specs and low-end specs in some of these devices there i mean the, the, the os is really efficient chrome OS is great i think it runs really well on sort of low performing hardware. we've seen that in a lot of laptops but um i think it's kind of a bit of a um, a bit of a, a strange concept these days that people think oh well, they have to have you know the high end specs of a device i think you know the mid to low end specs will work absolutely fine for the majority of users you know so who is this really for and this is, i guess that's kind of where this, where this comes down to well i think this is it's a really accessible price point it's kind of for anyone on a budget who wants a good portable computer they can use to do productivity things um a bit of browsing watch some Netflix and some streams from YouTube as a tablet, all these things, that's great. Play a few games, maybe, low-end low games, nothing too, 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 too labor-expensive. I think that's kind of, this is where this is for you, right? Also, people who just fancy a second device and, and who might want to play with Chrome OS a little bit, you know, it's at that accessible price point where you can do that, really. So um, it's that sort of thing. Who is it not for? I guess power users. For someone who really wants to kind of tinker properly with the with the Linux integration on Chrome OS, and if you want to kind of use it to play games on, then I don't think this is the device for you. Really, you'd be, you'd be better suited looking for a slightly more powerful um, Chrome-based device, or perhaps you know if you want games, go for a tablet. An iPad will suit, will serve you really well there. I should also say, I think if you really want to buy this for just the tablet experience, I would definitely consider the iPad over this, but. As an all-rounder, if you can see yourself using the productivity features and you know the in in kind of desktop mode and, and more traditional laptop mode, then it's really worth considering because I mean you can't really get much better value for the money than you can here. Okay, right. So let's wrap this up. Um, that's been my review of the Lenovo Chromebook Duet. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please do give me a sub to the channel if you enjoyed the video. It would really help. Um, I love making these videos. It, it's it's great to to, to get to get support and to enable me to do it a bit more. If you've got any comments and would like to ask any questions about the duet, then please do post them down below. I'll try my best to get back to all those questions. Um, and also, if you've got any kind of tips and tricks to point out in using Chrome OS, I'm always you know, up for hearing about those as a complete novice myself. Okay, as always everyone, please stay safe and look after yourselves in these really quite strange times, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers.